I'll start with introductions under Sheriff Matt Bean, District Attorney Greg McCaffrey, Chief Deputy Dan Rittenhouse, Captain Mike Williams, Investigator Connor Sanford, and Captain Ryan Swanson. So we're here to talk about the Caledonia homicide. Yesterday at approximately 3.37 p.m., we received a 911 call uh, where the subject stated that he had shot his roommate. Deputies were immediately dispatched. Um, they arrived on scene within minutes along with an Avon police officer um, who was dispatched out of Avon. You might ask, well, why did Avon go to Caledonia? It's just covering the call, get someone there as fast as we could. Uh, the caller was identified as Stephen Adams, a 56-year-old male, and the deceased, Dale Ryers, 64-year-old male. Um, upon entry, deputies met with the caller. Uh, he was cooperative with us. He remained cooperative with us uh, throughout the afternoon, the evening, this morning. Ultimately, uh, when deputies entered the home, the male was found deceased with multiple gunshot wounds. Throughout the night, we had patrol there, CID there, uh, FIU, which is the, the technicians, all under the command of Captain Mike Williams of our Criminal Investigations Division, and Connor Sanford, uh, the investigator who's the lead on this case, with the, um, the, the shooter all night long. Ultimately, Stephen Adams is charged with murder in the second degree and tampering with physical evidence. He will be arraigned tonight in Livingston County Cap Court at 7 o'clock p.m. And in addition to the members of the Sheriff's Office who participated, uh, Avon Police Department with their officer on the initial response, CHS Ambulance, and the Livingston County District Attorney's Office. With that, I'll, I'll take questions. I'll just preface that with, you know how this goes. It's an active investigation. I'll answer some things that I think I can answer. There's gonna be other things I'm just gonna tell you I can't answer. No word on the motive yet, sir, anything? Um, the motive we're still working through, but I can tell you that um, the deceased was the owner of the trailer. Um, the suspect was residing there and it sounds like the relationship between landlord and tenant was a bit tumultuous. Was there a fight or something? Like what happened to the So the details of that, um, we have a good idea of a lot of what transpired, but ultimately the district attorney is gonna be the one to prosecute this case. So I don't wanna say anything that's gonna be uh, uncomfortable for his prosecution or hinder it in any way. Um, but again, we can confirm that there was uh, a relationship between the two that was building in a very negative way. Yes? How many times was the person shot? Um, I will say multiple times. I won't, I'm not going to get into a specific amount, again, because of the prosecution of this case and because we're still working through it. Our techs are still on scene over there. For your viewers that are wondering when will we be cleared out, it could be several more hours, um, but we're trying our best to stay out of people's way over there. Uh, in that neighborhood. It's a kind of a tight little road there. So we're doing our best to be respectful of everybody. So the deceased was the landlord and Adams was also living there with him? That's correct. And when I say landlord, I mean he owned the trailer and the suspect was paying rent in exchange for living there. Do you know if it's he called right away? This happened earlier. Uh, I guess I'm asking because did anybody else call this in? I mean, it's a small community. So those details I'm also not going to get into. I will say that um, we did not have a call prior, but through the investigation we have learned additional facts as well. Any drugs or alcohol involved, sir? Um, again, I'm not going to get into details uh, based on the prosecution of the case and where it stands. Uh, the deceased is at the ME's office, and so there's details that we're still gathering as well. What can you tell us about the gun, the gun that was uh, we recovered multiple guns out of the home. Uh, the guns that are believed to be involved, uh, we believe we have in our possession. Again, I'm, I'm not going to get into the details of what the weapons were because I don't want to hinder the DA's prosecution of the case. Have calls to that residence? We have been called to the residence prior on Alpine Lane. 
Um, but nothing, I believe, of any type of violence, nothing of the two of these having issues, the, the two parties having issues. What do you think is the tampering with evidence? Like, I don't know if you can answer that. So a tampering charge comes when, pretty much what it sounds like, someone tampers with what they believe to be evidence that's going to be used against them. So you see those types of arrests on Interstate 390 sometimes. We take someone into custody and they try to move post custody or believing that they're about to be taken into custody, they try and conceal it um, or destroy that evidence believing it's going to be used against them. It would be similar in this case. The allegations are that he tampered, meaning um, Stephen Adams, the shooter, with physical evidence on scene. And we are, we're alleging that through our investigation, our technicians. Uh, I want to commend all the hard work of the investigators, the command staff, the technicians. These are cases that come down to really what's the evidence tell you on scene. We have one person alive that's telling a story, and we have one person that can't tell their story. So really what you're taking is the, the evidence on scene and letting it tell a story and taking the story of the person alive and seeing if it matches the evidence on scene. And the allegation is, is that we believed he, he tampered with, with evidence on scene. And so, sorry, uh, Stephen Adams, was he the suspect? Uh, yes, yeah, Stephen Adams is the suspect. He's also the caller. The deceased is Dale Ryers. R-Y-E-R-S-E. Stephen with a B, correct, like Victor. Do you know how long they've known each other? I believe it was a several year relationship, some type of friendship that they had. Any other questions for myself or the DA? And when you guys arrived, um, Adams was there and um, you guys took him into custody here and there? That's correct. He called uh, 911. Several deputy sheriffs were on scene within minutes. Uh, he ultimately was met at the door. He cooperated. There was no struggle. There was no standoff. It was peaceful. Uh, and he then cooperated with us. He wanted to tell us uh, his story of what happened. And he ultimately told that story throughout the afternoon, the evening, and, and this morning. So he was just kind of really chill about it, right? Is that what you're saying? Like he was really calm? Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, he, he wanted to cooperate. You know, there's certain people that um, don't want to cooperate, and they take different methods to not cooperate. This, this subject wanted to cooperate with our investigators, and he did so. This, this is really isn't a common thing where your suspect is the person that calls it in, and you say you're cooperating. <coughs> yeah, I mean, we've had that where the, the person who calls it in is ultimately ends up being the suspect. But in a case like this, you're trying to determine if the story he's telling could be uh, a justified homicide. There's no doubt you have a homicide. You have a dead person. But again, you have one person telling a story. And sifting through that is really the importance of it. Does the story make sense? If the story does make sense and the evidence leads to that story being true, would it be justified or still it would it not be? Is there a criminal act here? So those are the progressions that our investigators went through throughout the night and the command staff went through throughout the night. And ultimately, the end result is that we found it to be a criminal act, uh, murder and tampering with the physical evidence. Was Ryers, I'm sorry, just, was he pronounced dead when you guys arrived? He was. Uh, an ambulance was dispatched on scene immediately, even when the call was first dispatched. When deputies secured the scene, they did call the ambulance in but there was no life-saving measures uh, performed due to him being uh, dead on our arrival. And from the time that Adams called, from the time of the shooting to when Adams called, how much time do you think had elapsed by then? Uh, I'm not sure on that. I'd have to get you an answer. I'm going to go off the top of my head, uh, maybe 10 minutes or somewhere around there from the time he called, you're saying, to the time we arrived on scene? From the time he shot the, the victim and then you called. Yeah, that, that's still under investigation. Uh, we've done numerous neighborhoods over there, so that's part of the case that's ongoing. Um, the, but it's something that we're looking at of, did he actually call when he shot him, or was there a delay in it?
No other suspects here for suing in this at all? No, nope. this is a completely isolated incident, and I appreciate those of you that came out last night and, and really got that, that message to your viewers because you a lot of times are our mouthpiece. And that partnership with our community is one of the most valuable ones that we can have. And imagine you live in this neighborhood and you, you see all these first responders and then we're there several hours and then rumors start circulating that someone was shot and we don't want people to be alarmed if there's no need to be alarmed. And in this case, we were very confident this was two parties involved. They were both with us and that there was no cause for public alarm. And that message is, is still the same today. This is a completely isolated incident. Uh, two people in a, in a, in a bad uh, tenant landlord type relationship. Can you provide information about the arraignment tonight? Yeah, so in Livingston County, it's the cap court, which means it's at the Livingston County Jail. We do our arraignments at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So if you walk down the sidewalk, the uh, Livingston County Jail entrance, you'll see, and that's where the, the arraignment will be held. Any other questions? All right, perfect. Again, I want to thank you all for coming down. I want to appreci I appreciate you and thank you again for last night. And I want to recognize all the members uh, behind me. You, you know, these are long scenes and they did, they, most of them have been up. I think all of them have been up since yesterday. So again, thank you all for your patience and, and well done to all the command staff members. The press release will be sent out electronically. There are some hard copies here if you want to grab one. And the mug shot will be attached to that, uh, and then it'll go out in the next 10, 15 minutes. Okay, thank you, folks.